Hi, today I'm doing a bit of MIG welding and I thought I'd share a few tips and things I've learned over the years. Uh, so why is MIG welding useful for the DIY? Um, well, there's quite a few jobs that is convenient to have a welder. This, for instance, is a custom exhaust that uh, I've just welded up for my Project Freelander that I'm working on. It's a turbo conversion. I don't pretend to be a welding expert, but you can get reasonable welding results as a DIY wire just using a very cheap MIG welder. This one was uh, bought years ago from Machine Mart, a uh, brand of Clark, uh, about the cheapest I could get at the time. Uh, limited range of uh, power settings, uh, one, two, min and max, but um, with a bit of practice, uh, it's perfectly possible to do quite a lot of welding as a DIY and what I'm going to do in this video is share some of the tips I've learned over all oh, probably 20 years of uh, welding different cars uh, did a lot of welding on this car over here which is an old classic Triumph Stag uh, a lot of all the wheel arches sills floor pans and so on and although the initial investment in the equipment is a little bit expensive, a few hundred pounds, um, it's, it's well worth it over the long run because it um, enables you to do jobs that would be expensive to get done elsewhere, like this exhaust system, for instance. And um, it is a lot more convenient because you can do it at home rather than trying to transport everything to some other premises. So what I'm going to do is go over some of the tips that I've learned. Um, very quickly, I'll touch on the equipment, protective equipment you need, the sort of uh, cutters that is useful to have, the different types of gas and wire um, that these big welders use and what you can weld with, so um, steel, aluminium, stainless steel, and so on. Uh, how to set the right gas flow, so these use uh, bottles of MIG welding gas, just see at the end that, with a flow regulator on the top. Um, you need to get that flow right, so you don't want to waste gas, but you need enough gas to get a good weld. You need to set the wire speed, and you need to set the power. So quite a lot of variables, or at least those three things, uh, affect how good a weld you're going to get. And also the thickness of uh, wire, and using the right type of wire for the right type of metal. So also what happens when you're doing the welding, what can go wrong, uh, what to look for when some of those settings are wrong, like... Uh, when the wire speed is wrong, or you haven't got enough gas, or the gas has run out, uh, what will your welds start to look like? And we can see that in some pictures we'll do in a minute. And also we'll touch on what happens if you start blowing holes uh, in the metal you're trying to weld, and what, what can you do about it? And a few other tips, like uh, keeping your welder cool if you're doing lots of welding. So if you fancy doing a bit of big welding as a DIY wire, this isn't really meant for the professional, then listen on and hopefully some of these things will be useful. So a quick word on protective equipment. What is absolutely essential is a welding mask to protect your eyes from the very bright light that comes out of the weld. Um, ideally, you want some welding gloves to protect your hands from burns and so on. You'll probably want some cutting equipment. So a disc cutter. This is with a thin one millimetre stainless steel cutting disc in it. That's useful for cutting up your pieces of metal that you want to weld. Uh, alternatively, you could use tin cutters. I've used those on steel sheets before. And also this air-powered, uh, what's called a nibbler. Uh, of course, you need a, um, a compressor with an airline on it to run this one. Basically, these teeth move in and out and cut sheets of metal. It's quite useful on large sheets. Uh, if you're using a disc cutter, you need probably want some headphones, eye mask, probably some more general purpose gloves as well. When you first start welding, don't be discouraged because you'll probably get some quite poor, frustrating results. Um, but it is, with a bit of practice, quite possible to get some reasonably looking wells. Um, here's some reasonably looking wells I've just done 10 minutes ago. Uh, this is actually with stainless steel, on stainless steel, quite thick metal as well. Um, sometimes it will uh, end up being all knobbly. Let's see, probably some poorer ones. Yeah, you might get some big lumps of uh, weld build-up. Uh, that was going around a big hole anyhow, so don't be too discouraged by how it looks. Uh, as long as it's functional, seals the gas in, in this case on the exhaust, and is strong enough for that application, then um, that's what you want. 
So that was tip number one, get the right equipment. See links in the video description for all these things I'm going to mention. Tip number two is basically uh, to use uh, combined things, the right wire and the right gas for the metal that you want to weld. So on these machines, the wire is held on a spool at the side. Uh, you basically load it into this tube through into the output um, tubing. First of all, you have to choose the thickness of the wire, which um, is proportionate to the thickness of the sheets of metal you're trying to weld. Uh, mostly something like 0.8 of a millimetre wire is a pretty general purpose one for a lot of jobs. Um, there is 0.6 mil steel that I've used before and very thin sheets of metal. And if you're doing a lot of structurally important uh, steel welding, they use a steel um, weld wire. Uh, most of the time I end up using stainless steel weld wire. The advantage of that is it can uh, cope with a higher temperature or needs a higher temperature for it to melt, which allows the, uh, the weld to flow more into the metal. Depending on your thickness of the wire that you use, you have to choose this spool so that it's a little um, rough slot matches the thickness of the wire. Uh, make sure it goes into that little slot on the, sp on the little spool. And then this knob is on a, a spring and you just need to tighten it enough so that the wire feeds in smoothly and it uh, doesn't slip. But if you do it too tight, if you get a jam at the end of your nozzle, like the uh, weld is stuck to the side, we really, you really want the spool to slip rather than trying to force lots and lots of wire to bunch up at the end. If you're welding stainless steel, obviously use stainless steel wire. Uh, if you're welding aluminium, which can be done with a MIG welder, then obviously aluminium and uh, thin sheets of steel, use steel wire. For the gas to use, uh, there's basically three types with these uh, cheap welders. CO2, argon CO2 mix and pure argon. Use pure argon for aluminium. For stainless steel use argon and CO2. Uh, you can also use CO2 with stainless steel. Um, that's not the recommended one to use with stainless but uh, it does seem to work on probably structurally not so significant wells like on exhaust systems. Then uh, I found that um, it's, it's good enough to use and on steel use CO2. You also find that the CO2 you can get in a reasonable uh, large size bottle, 600 grams, which does seem to last quite a bit longer than the argon bottles. Tip number three is all about setting the right gas rate. So when you're not using your welder, make sure you unscrew this so there's no leakage of gas out of the bottle. Uh, when you want to use it, uh, obviously screw it tight onto the bottle. Have this um, on zero to start with and then have your welder off, listen for the gas coming out of your the end of your wand. Uh, obviously you need to press the trigger button to release the gas. And then gradually turn up this regulator knob until you start to hear a little bit of hissing coming out of the end. Now the key is not to have too much gas coming out, which uh, first of all wastes your expensive gas and also cools the well down too much. Uh, but if you don't have enough gas coming out, then you'll um, start to get a fizzy weld. So um, it's a bit like um, a, a sparkler going off, if you know what those are, handheld little sparklers. Um, a lot of sparks and a lot of fizzing as the iron in the weld oxidizes and uh, creates a noticeable fizzing noise and a bit more sparking which hopefully you can see in this video here so i'm looking uh using my camera phone through my welding mask and looking at the weld and you see here we haven't got enough gas and it's fizzing so then you need to increase the gas flow a little bit more uh, until that stops and here you can see what it looks like with a reasonable gas flow. So try and keep a consistent arc like shown here. If you can move it slightly from side to side as you're welding, but not moving it too much to break the arc. As you see here, also helps going downhill. 
and the weld there we are it's uh, melted into the metal not too bad not perfect but good enough the other thing you need to set is the wire feed rate uh, ignore the fact that my knob is broken off here I've just got a little screw to adjust it uh, if you have not enough wire flow rate then the, the wire will melt and pull back from the weld you're trying to make and keep interrupting keep turning off the arc as you can see in this uh, video if you have just the right amount of wire flow rate wire feed rate then you should have a continuous arc that continuously allows a blob of metal molten metal to form at the end of your wire without the weld the arc going out if you have too much wire flow rate as we can now see in this video you'll see that the wire is not melting fast enough the wire then touches the metal and again the arc goes out uh, that needs quite a lot of practice to gradually adjust the wire rate until uh, it maintains a steady arc yeah the critical thing the other variable is setting the right um, power rate uh, on here you've only got four settings because it's quite a cheap welder you need to effectively match the power level to the thickness of the metal that you're trying to weld so too much power and you'll blast holes in the metal not enough power and the weld you're creating will just sit on top of the metal won't bond onto the sheet metal that you're trying to weld to um, what you're after is something where you can probably see uh, here yep yeah. you can see the metal has sort of melted into the surface not a particularly pretty one maybe uh, these ones here where it's sort of melted into the surface rather than sitting on top of the um, metal tip number six what to do if you start making holes in the metal if you find you have made a hole and it's going to happen uh, now and again uh, you can recover it just by doing a little bit of welding as we see here in a few second stages allowing the weld to cool off in between each bit of welding it means it doesn't flow too much it flows enough to make a weld but not too much so that it flows and falls down your hole you could eventually build up the weld and fill the hole as we see here you could also fill it with a extra piece of metal or feed in a thin piece of metal as you're doing the welding so again you'll have to practice set the power level then adjust your wire speeds to make sure you have a consistent arc and then see how well that welds on the metal that you're trying to weld together tip number seven what to do if you're doing a lot of welding and you weld it overheats so these cheap ones don't have a cooling fan and after a while it'll firmly cut out um, so to compensate for that i have just used a normal household external fan on the cool setting just uh on fan blowing setting blow that onto the transformer inside the welder i've actually bent up the side of this cover you don't have to do that you could blow through the vents uh, that will allow your welder to keep going for longer before it uh, thermally shuts down. It will also get too hot if you find you're shorting out onto your metal surface a bit too much. Tip number eight, of course make sure your metal is uh, clean, nice and shiny. Uh, wasn't a problem on these pieces of fairly new stainless steel. Uh, you need a good contact for your earthing strap to connect to because you've got to make an electrical connection between the earthing strap and your welding wand um, and between the two is where the current flows and forms the arc. Uh, if it's on previously painted metal of course you'll need to grind off the metal to get a good surface to make good electrical contact. If you don't have that your arc will keep switching off and on. And of course the final tip is keep practicing get a spare piece of metal, uh, experiment with different power, different flow rates of the wire, different gas flow rates and so on until you're happy you've got a reasonable weld and then try it on the actual object that you're trying to weld. Just for interest and to show how useful it is to have a welder, here is a Focus ST exhaust system, stainless steel exhaust system, straight through box, um, on a fitted to a Freelander. So it's wider bore pipe and this exhaust outlet on the Focus ST comes out of the middle and I've cut out the metal, shifted around the internals, shifted the pipes over, 
to the right so that it clears the tow bar. Doesn't look uh, too bad. And obviously involved quite a lot of welding with various bits of pipe going around corners and so on, all the way down. Over here, the catalytic converter from the Focus ST with the oxygen sensor, a lot of welding to do, refitting that with a flexi joint and a uh, removable joint also fitted with a lot of welding to do for the pipe to join onto the downpipe, which for, is from a Rover 75. So uh, that's just for interest, just to show how useful it is to have a MIG welder. Thanks for watching.